Hi, my name is Robin Moffat. I'm a developer advocate at Confluence, and today I'd like to show you how you can use KSQL DB to create filtered streams of data in Apache Kafka. So I'm going to use a demo that's published on GitHub. I'll put the links in the show notes. And from here, we're going to launch into our KSQL uh, command prompt. There's a graphical interface as well in Control Center. You can use that if you want, but I'm going to use the uh, command line interface here. So to start off with, we're going to look at the topics that we've got available to us. We can say show topics. You've got different topics on your Kafka cluster. So these topics could come from anywhere. They could come from uh, your producer API writing directly into a topic. They could come from Kafka Connect ingesting these messages from a message queue or a database or a flat file somewhere else and streaming it into Kafka. But we've got data in a Kafka topic. So I'm going to say we've got this one here. It's called orders. And we can say print orders. And that's going to show us it's going to run a consumer against that particular topic. So now it's just dumping out the contents of it. We've not done anything kind of like SQLy yet. We're just saying what are the messages in that Kafka topic. I could run Kafka Cat and look at the same data. It's just a consumer. And we can see we've got a schema in the data. We can see we've got uh, an order time and address and units and so on. If I just run that again and say just showing the first one, it says here value format Avro. So the data's in Avro and it's kind of inspected the data. It works out this is how we're going to deserialize it. So we can actually use the fact that it's in Avro and create a stream against it. Now, if this was JSON data, we could still create a stream against it, but we'd need to define that schema explicitly and type those different columns in. But we don't need to do that because it's in Avro. So we're going to pull down the schema from the schema registry automatically. So we say create stream orders. So a stream in KSQL DB, it's just a Kafka topic. It's just an unbounded series of events. But unlike a Kafka topic, it's not just bytes. It's actually got a schema. So Kafka topics, key value bytes, KSQL DB stream, Kafka topic, unbounded series of events, but that topic with a schema applied to it. So we're saying it's called orders. We're saying the uh, value format is Avro, which means implicitly we're going to pull down the schema for that particular topic. And here's our topic from the schema registry, which means when we do this and say describe orders, it's okay, your orders stream looks like this. You've got a schema to it. It's got the order time, which is a big int. You've got the order ID. You've got an address here. So we've got a nested object within here. So it's a struct. And within that, you've got a street. Uh, you've got the city and the state. So I could do this. I can say select the uh, item ID and the order units and the address from orders emit changes. So emit changes means uh, I want to subscribe to those changes as they happen. So as new orders get placed, as new messages arrive on the Kafka topic, show me them on the screen as the result of that select statement. So here's our item ID, here's our order units, and here's the address. I could actually inspect that address if I want to. I can kind of like say, uh, just pull out just the state. So we can say just pull out the state. So you can use that dash greater than uh, operator. Let's pause the screen. That uh, operator there to get uh, fields within a nested object. And now we're just pulling out that particular piece of it. So we've got orders, they're streaming in. We've applied a schema to it so we can pick out different fields. So what we can do with KSQL DB is we can say any messages on this topic that match a given characteristic, route those to a different topic. So in this case, we're going to say any orders that are placed for New York, route them over to a different topic. Maybe we've got separate processing that we want to apply to data that uh, matches that predicate, the data for orders placed for New, for New York. Or maybe we've got some analytics that we want to run just on that set of data. For whatever reason, we want to take that stream of data and create a subset of it. So we're going to do it like this. We're going to say select these from here. We'll just do select star, so we pull in all of the values from orders, and then we apply a predicate. So where the address state equals, and um, we'll say uh, equals New York, and we'll spell it right. And it looks like this. So we say emit changes. So now we're filtering the stream. We've not written it anywhere else yet. It's still just echoing it out to the console here, but we can kind of prototype and make sure our predicate looks correct. And we can see this now. We've got data just for New York being returned here. And so now what we can do is we can actually say we're going to persist that as a new stream. So that looks like this. We take our existing statement, our select statement, and we say create stream as. So create stream, give it a name. So let's call it orders NY. 
So create stream as select, it's like create a table as select in the database world. Take this table, take a static copy of some of the data and write it onto a new table. But in the streaming world, we say create stream as select and that select is a continuous query. So this continuous query that we ran here, that emit changes. So any changes that arrive on that source stream that match our predicate are gonna get emitted onto this new stream. Before we run this, actually, I'm going to do something. I'm going to change the offset. So my session at the moment is using the latest offset, which means that when I run a query like this, it's going to the end of the topic, and as new messages arrive like that at the moment, you see they get emitted out onto the screen. But actually, because Kafka stores data, and because we're creating a derived stream, and for our purposes, we want to be able to say, I want to process all of the data on the topic, plus everything else that arrives subsequently, we're going to type this in and a uh, set auto offset reset to earliest. So go back to the beginning of the topic as a consumer, which is what KSQLDB is doing. And now if I run a select, I'm getting it like screenfuls of stuff because it's going to go back to the beginning of the topic and then it will slow down as it catches up with now and you see the new messages arriving. So that's quite boring to watch, but what we're going to do now is actually push that out into a new stream. So we're going to say create stream orders NY as that select statement here with our predicate. When we create this stream, we can also uh, define additional properties. So you can say create this stream here uh, with, and we could change the Kafka topic. So by default, the Kafka topic will just take on the name of the stream. So Kafka topic will get called orders NY. We can say Kafka topic equals orders uh, New York. And we could say how many partitions we want on it. So partitions equals uh, six as, and then you've got your select statement. So now it goes and creates that stream. So we've created a query that's now writing into that stream. If we say show streams, you can see we've now got orders, which is the one we created originally against that orders topic. We've got orders NY, which is our stream, which is populating this Kafka topic. They're both serialized using Avro. And if we say show topics, we've got a new uh, topic here. This orders NY. Turns out the original stream also had six partitions. So we've not actually changed the partition count but that partitions that we set in that create stream as select, that would actually have changed it if we'd needed it to. So we can say describe orders and why we can see our new stream and it's got the same schema because we did select star. We'll see in another time how you can change the schema by selecting different fields or changing their names and so on and so on. But here we're just doing some filtering. So let me split my screen now and I'm gonna spin up another KSQL DB uh, command prompt. And at the top here, I'm going to dump out the existing topic, so the source topic. So I'm going to say print orders, and it's going to go whizzing by because it's got everything from the topic up until now, including. I'm going to say find New York. So as we get new messages arriving in that source topic, you'll see because the terminal uh, program I'm using here, it's highlighting anytime it sees New York. And then at the bottom here, I'm going to run a new uh, consumer and I'm going to say print, actually I'm going to set the offset back to the earliest. I'm going to say print, and we called it orders New York. So now it whizzes by, but this is just that new topic we were populating. So we've got all of the existing New York orders, and then as a New York order arrives in the top of the screen here, a new message on that source topic, you'll see it appears on that topic at the bottom there. So filtering uh, streams of data using KSQL DB is one of the really useful things. It's not huge, complex, great big stream processing, but it's really useful stream processing. You've got a source of data arriving in Kafka. You've got one or more different applications want to use that data. Instead of pushing that filtering down to those applications and having to get them to scale to kind of like do all the filtering and stuff like that, we can apply that stream processing upstream within something like KSQL DB, and then you have much smaller Kafka topics for your downstream consumers to consume and just read those messages that they need. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for lots more KSQL DB, Kafka and Confluent Platform topics.